Yeah, they are as well. Just tweaking up on vintage TVs here. Went and had a look at my pot, how it had a little bit of bleeding. Now, the, the, I've been reading up if the brightness is really good, the um, emissions is really good. And all three of them are really good. The brightness is bloody excellent, so the CRTs are okay. But the bleeding can also be caused by um, capacitors drifting off battery in the color amplifier circuit. I got this new adjusted and did some adjustments and the bleeding is minimal now, so this one's pretty good. Let's work on this TV now. This has got a bit of bleeding as well. Especially on the red, it bleeds like crazy, so the amplifier is probably, um, yeah, the red's amplified way too much, so something's drifted. I've also um, tweaked up the horizontal hold because that was really um, touchy. And this potentiometer here has actually been hit and cracked off the board. And that was causing the uh, pin cushioning. I had really bad pin cushioning on this thing. All these sorts of deflection faults are very, very, very typical of Mitsubishi TVs. So I have to pull that board off and re repair that uh, potentiometer to get the uh, pin cushioning correct. Nice to get this TV really good, nice and tuned up and uh, preserved because these are this is the oldest in my collection of the other color sets. That'd be the next oldest, and that's the next oldest, so that's probably 1972, I reckon. Yeah, then again, the date code is 1969, so 1969, 72, 73, 981. And that white general I've got me, I'm using nearly all the time as a 1979, so. Love to get some more of these TVs in my collection, so I'll uh, get this one all tuned up nice and good. It is just all age-related stuff, so these are old over overbuilt Japanese sets do go forever. It's removed PCC, but I think I'm just guessing that it stands for pin cushion control amplifier. I think. And you can see here, it's actually been bumped and cracked. The track's actually broken, so C9 and 502, I think that's 502 killer aim. I have to look at my circuit board stash and find one like that to replace it. Anyway, I've got to do some dusting too because all this dust on the fly back and around the um, anode cause it to crackle when I turn it on. A bit of corona, so I've got to clean that up once I get everything all adjusted. Because this thing does have good brightness, so it's promising. Usually if it's bleeding and it hasn't got good brightness, it's definitely the CRT, but 99% of the time, or 95% of the time, it can be um, uh, transistors can be leaky or capacitors and resistors drifting off value with age in the um, video amplifier circuit. And that can cause a red, but either of the three guns that get overdriven as a result of that. So the CRT pretty much should be okay. So. Let's uh, do one, one thing at a time first, so we'll get to that later. I've got to make myself a test pattern DVD for PAL TV so I can get these um, tuned to the absolute best they can be. So, And I can start using these again, instead of just storing them away and not using them. I love to actually use these from time to time. I'll set them up. And actually, uh, there is some good shows on TV. Not, much, not very often, though. But once in a blue moon, there is a good show I like to watch. So I like to watch on any of these old TVs. Anyway, let's find a, see if I've got to replace one of those types of um, pots, hopefully the same value. I found a modern one, so 5020 part number, the value. Just happened to find another one here on that um, blown up switch mode power supply, that uh, battery charger, I mean. So keep those old uh, bits and bobs, you never know when, you're gonna, when you might need them. So the footprint should still be the same. It's all physically the same connections, you just got to go on that way instead of that way. So I've got to have it like that and get a have that taken off and someone get it from the side instead of from the back so I should be able to turn that carefully with my finger but it's a uh, near to fly back so you got to be very careful not to shock yourself anyway let's back this on and give it a test all right she's all in here we are perfect had to spread its legs a little bit so to speak to get it to fit in the same footprint but I'm happy with that fitted quite well Oh, hang on. It's not plugged in there. Oh, that power wheel must have taken a dump. Did too. 
Yeah, meant to connect doing that. Hey, look at that. It's all straight edge. It used to go whoosh, pin cushion the buggery. Now it's fixed the buggery. The bleeding though, if I go turn the colour right up. And I'm gonna have to fine tune that. It's not too bad though. The brightness is bloody good. Turn it falling down. Hey, that pot didn't even need adjusting. Look at that, I didn't even bother adjusting it, it's all spot on. Oh beautiful. Yeah, this pitch is bloody good actually. This CRT is actually better than I thought. Yeah, it used to bleed heat, so I'll turn the colour up now. You see the yellow. Good colour, see? No bleeding, but only on the red it's bad. Turn that volume back down. Turn the colour down a bit. Actually, this uh, colour bleeding problem is not bad at all. It's not as, nowhere near as bad as I thought. B level, turn it right up, stupidly bright, middle, right down. Yeah, sharpness, well, the sharpness is really good. The brightness is really good. So this tube's an actually a lot better nick than I thought. It's just the components sort of drifted with age, especially in the video amplifier circuit as I've been reading. Especially you're going to check components in a neck board, which have drifted up, may have drifted off, uh, drifted off with age, which is a possibility. It makes sense. So. Colour all the way up, no bleeding. Turn it down, that's about what it kind of looks like on an LCD TV. They're all the same channel by the way, except for that one. Yeah, they're all, all, the, all on UHF for that box. Bit red there when it should be black, see? The picture should be black, not so red. So I think something's going on there. Something has drifted. Yeah, I think I've got to do some adjusting. It's actually supposed to be more of a black instead of red, too much red tint in the picture, so I'm gonna have to check some uh, components. Red looks like red's being overdriven. So something's been uh, drifted with age, and it's giving me too much red, which is why I get explains why I get a lot of bleed with that colour. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to um, check capacitors. I'll start with capacitors and we'll go from there. Okay, if you did some checks of those little electrolytics. They were seen to be okay. This is a um, RGB signal board here with a um, delay line and everything on it. So it's all modulated. Now you can see it here, Mitsubishi cannot solder for crap. Any old AWO film made by Mitsubishi, give them a tap. And to pitch it often, the picture will disappear altogether, which is common with these older TVs. This had in particular had a um, couple of uh, issues of I uh, had to um, correct, but I give it a good hit now and nothing happens, so I've pretty much ironed out and got all the um, bad solder joints uh, taken care of. So next thing I'm going to look at, they reckon transistors here, these three transistors are main ones, they can go leaky as well. So I've got one there, one there, one there. They don't work very hard though, they don't have heat sinks. So you can check those transistors, I haven't got a, tran a good transistor test today to test them with. I know they can go, I reckon they can go leaky. But those capacitors are now okay. The resistors, well, there's no real, uh, they may drift, but there's a possibility. There's some resistors here I could probably check. Two there and one down there. I think these are part of the um, amplifier as well. So you've got one there, red, green, and blue. They're part of the amplifier circuit, I'm pretty sure. So I could check those resistors to see if they're spot on. Yeah, I reckon something like that can happen too, so I'll give them a bit of a measure with a multimeter. See if they're uh, spot on value, because they're power resistors. That one's 12.06 kilo ohm. That one's 12.1 kilo ohms. This one's 11.94 kilo ohms. I wonder why it's gone down in value. 12.1, so... Yeah, that should be within its tolerance. Might replace this one, that's a bit low. So if that's low, that will allow more power to get more amplification, so I'll start with that one there. That's the lowest value, so we'll, we'll check that one, I'll replace that one and see what it does. I won't touch any of the adjustments yet, that's the last resort. Alright, after replacing that resistor, I've actually found this one was actually more drifted. 
which is the one in the middle there, not the one here. That actually drifted the most, so I replaced that with an identical one to test it okay. And it brought the colour down a little bit, so I turned the actual, um, I turned down, turned the red drive signal down a little bit. And look at that, the bleeding is a lot better. I can turn the B level up. That's flat out now, the bleeding is nowhere near as bad. Colour all the way up. I'll get it a little bit better than that. Let's get everything turned, get the controls here turned right up. Might be able to fine tune that. Yeah, there's a bit of bleeding there still. And there's some more tweaks, and I reckon I can get that a, little, a lot better. So, viewers, just enjoy our uh, digital TV reception here with my redneck antenna. Just a car antenna, this is picking up through. Not bad. And look at that. So just excuse a breakup. The bleeding is pretty much gone. So to actually do our actual proper, proper, proper colour calibration, I need a proper colour bar set up, test gen generator, to do it properly. But so far, it's looking pretty good. I've got to get the balanced fine chain though, I think. I can't really tell now, but with some pictures, it may be a tiny bit off. Because components have drifted off, so I've got to touch everything up to perfect spec, but the bloody bleeding pretty much stopped. Brightness level. Once I was black, not too much overdriven, otherwise I'll wear the tube out more. That used to bleed and smear off, not anymore. Colour all the way up. I turn it down a bit so I get it like an um, flat panel. Just get the same colour temperature, so to speak. Brightness is good. That's contrast, actually. That's actually working quite well. This tube's actually good. That's good. It's a good thing about Japanese, old Japanese TVs. They, uh, they overbuilt things really well, even the CRT. That's good. I'm happy with that. Just got to do some cabinet work though. I keep moving it around, just wrecks the cabinet more. I'm going to have to set up a good um, uh, sup buddy in my room. Have all the three TVs set up and I can just uh, use them from time to time. Yeah, happy with that. As you can see, dead straight, no pin cushioning. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, she's all up to crap anyway. I'm happy with that. This TV is pretty much fine tuned for now. Unless I stopped the bleeding on the red. Man, that was real bad though. Not bad. Anyway, thanks for watching.